Well, I think today might be the day. Let's do the June garden tour. Come with me. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Horticulture Geek. I'm Ray, and today we are going to do our June garden tour. Um, I know a lots of people have joined us um, over the past few weeks. Um, a lot of people saw our May garden tour. A lot has changed since that time. So I thought today would be fun to walk around and show you how the garden is looking today. So let's start right here where we've got our row of canna lilies coming in. Um, I don't have any blooms yet. These typically are a late bloomer for me uh, because they are more protected. Um, this, we're in between the fence and the house here. They get more shade. So they will bloom. They're beautiful yellow, but they're usually later on in the season for me. Here we have lemon balm. It's a wonderful plant to have in the garden. It's medicinal. It smells wonderful, um, but it can be a garden beast. Um, and you can see it's starting to set flowers. So I will come in here, um, here in the next uh, week or so, and I will give this guy a haircut. Because if you let the flowers go to seed, the seeds go everywhere and you will have lemon balm everywhere. Here I have an artichoke growing in a pot with some onion. Um, I seeded several artichokes this winter and this was my lone survivor. Um, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know I'm not the best at seed growing. Um, I don't have the patience for it, but I had one lone artichoke, so he's here. And this brings us to our first vegetable raised bed. Um, I have pole beans growing up our cattle trellis. This side is doing really well. The cabbage is smothered out, the ones that were right there, which is fine. And then this side is taken back off now as well. And so in here, I still have my cabbages. In the May garden tour, we still had lettuce and broccoli and all sorts of stuff in this bed. That's all gone. And now I have come in and planted the empty spots with corn. So you can see I've got pretty good germination rate on my corn coming up. Um, I have had, I do believe, a squirrel uh, get in here and dig a few things or maybe a bird. So I've lost a few things, but that's all right. I mean, this is just a, a kale, a curly leaf kale. So I just leave him because he's fine. More cabbages. And then here I have my cucumbers. The cucumbers are doing really well, as you can see. They are growing up the cattle panel trellis. They are loving the spot. Um, I've got some onions under them. And here, I have, let me move the kid's toy. I have some peanuts. So I have a couple of peanut plants here. So later on in the season, we can dig out peanuts. Um, now peanuts, just they grow like a potato basically. So under the ground there, that plant is forming lots of fun peanuts. This is uh, mustard greens. So I've got a big pot of mustard greens growing. Grapevine here. The grapevine is really doing well this year. Um, I planted this a couple years ago, um, and so this year it is really taking off and, and doing quite well. And here in front of the shed, we have these containers. These are probably my favorite containers in the garden right now. Something about them I just love the way they look. So we have a hookara a calabrocoa, an ivy, a, a weed, a hosta, and a, a bleeding heart plant. This is a variegated bleeding heart plant. So instead of the solid purple, it's got the pink uh, intermixed in it. So it's pink and purple. And so, and I think it plays really well with this pink calabrocoa. So those are looking really good to me. All right, let's go right over here. Oh, let me show you this right here. So this container is Gerber daisies. 
these Gerber daisies are, I want to say three years old at this point. They overwinter in this pot. I pull the pot into the shed in the wintertime. Um, so there are only two, two Gerber daisy plants here. They are both massive. And I have back planted them this year with cannas. These are a variegated canna that I just, I got in an unboxing video this year. If you look back on my channel list, um, you will see me unboxing an order um, from Holland Bulb Farms. And so this variegated canna came from there and I popped it in there with this canna, with the Gerber. The wheelbarrow planter is looking really good to me. Um, so I really like this thing, and let me move some elephant ears out of the way. So you can see, indeed, it is a wheelbarrow, just an old, antique, crusty wheelbarrow. I picked this up at a flea market for, I think, $14, um, and I have Dusty Millers in here. Now, the Dusty Millers were in here in the winter with my pansies, because Dusty Millers are, or do, they're all year round plant here in central Arkansas for us. So it looks really good in here with my pansies in the winter. And then I just popped out the pansies and put in um, the impatience for the summer because uh, this is, tends to be a shady spot. And you can see what the Dusty Millers are doing is they're kind of getting leggy. They're elongating out to get more sunlight for themselves. But then they put out these really beautiful, interesting flower heads. Um, the pollinators typically like these. Um, when it gets a little later in the day, the sun comes out more. Uh, the bees will be buzzing these. So this is looking really good. Um, here's our hydrangea. Now this is a standard hydrangea macrophylla that I have pruned into a standard form. And that basically just means I tried to prune it into a tree. So this started out as a big massive bush. This was here when we bought this garden, we bought this house. It was really planted in the wrong spot. Uh, because if you are familiar with hydrangeas, you know how massive they get. And so this thing in bush form would literally come out to about right here every year and it would branch out. And so it, it really impeded in the driveway. And so we pruned it up to more of a tree form and you can see all the old undergrowth there that keeps getting pruned out. And it is a maintenance job to keep it pruned, but <clears throat> it's pretty and it's worth it. Now the brown you see in the flowers is because he got sunburned, he got dried out. We had several days of really, really hot, dry heat and uh, didn't get enough water and it started, the plant started to sacrifice the flowers. All right, so from over here, let's just turn around and we are gonna give you just a panoramic of the rest of the garden. So you can kind of get a lay for the land in case this is your first garden tour. So we started down there, we looked at the shed, and we got there, and so here's the rest of the garden for the backyard. All right, so let's take after this and get in here and show you some things up close. All right, so right here, let's start here on this section of the garden, and you can see the full purple bleeding heart, um, and it is flowering, so it puts out these really neat, sweet little purple flowers um, in the crook of its leaves. I really like it. It's pretty. Um, and the Super Tunia Vista White is planted in this big pot. You can't even see the pot anymore. Um, between the plants coming up and the Super Tunias draping down. And I think it, I like it. I think it's beautiful. Uh, my centerpiece in this pot is a rose. Um, and you can see it comes out this really interesting orange and it matures to this soft pink, almost. Really nice rose. Now, we can walk right over here and you can see this sedum is starting, is flowering as well in here. So just a really nice hint back here, under planted under the stuff. We've got another vegetable patch here. <clears throat> I've got a squash and a zucchini. This is one squash plant and one zucchini plant um, because you have to remember this is a very small garden. This is a backyard urban garden. And so I don't have rows of garden space to plant things. 
Um, my squash is starting to look puny. Um, I do have squash bugs on it. I have been spraying it. I don't like to do that, but I was trying to work with the squash. Um, and also this soil this year presented a calcium deficiency. So I've had blossom end rot on my squash and zucchini. So I have a feeling that these plants will not be here for the July garden tour, but for today, they're here. Got peppers planted here and a uh, tomato planted here. The tomato is absolutely loaded down. There are tomatoes everywhere through here. And I've got a basil. Um, basil is really nice to plant next to your tomatoes um, because the basil, so the smell of the basil is a natural deterrent for the tomato hornworm, the moth that lays the egg that turns into the hornworm. So I plant basil and marigolds around my tomatoes to try to prolong the time. The hornworms will find it, but it does help to deter them. This is a green twister coneflower, looking really good this year. Um, so the you, you can see it really good in this baby, this young fresh flower. The petals come out a chartreuse green with purple veining, and then as they age and mature, they just kind of go purple. So really enjoy those. I've got a calendula planted back there. I've got the white daisy back there. Um, I've got a blueberry in a pot. This uh, container is doing pretty well as well. Um, so I've got a couple of cabbages planted in a container with some Dusty Millers and some Dianthus there, just to add a little character and interest and grow some food as well here at the base of this Japanese maple. This little section of the garden um, is interesting. It's kind of a hodgepodge. Um, I've got a real pretty clematis here growing on this little trellis. Um, now he is quit flowering at the moment, but I leave the seed heads on because they're really interesting and nice to see. And I've just kind of got gladiolas planted in here, some irises, some daylilies, um, uh, blue, Salvia, more, my goodness. My camera lady's laughing at me because I couldn't remember. Um, this is a play in the blue salvia. And so what's interesting about these varieties of salvia, they're good garden additions. So in addition to being perennial, in addition to having a chartreuse lime green foliage, the calyx, which is the part of the flower, the calyx is that like you have a purple stem and a calyx that holds the blue flower. And even when the blue flower, here I'll sacrifice, is gone, you still have a pretty purple calyx on a pretty purple stem. So it still provides interest in color. It still looks like almost like a flower, even though the flowers are not there. So those are really good to have. Um, here we have my liatris, liatris, however you pronounce that, wherever you're from, um, is starting to bloom and take off. Um, now this is a spreader, so this is the second year these plants have been in the garden. Um, eat where like there was one planted there and one planted there. And you can see this one has grown into four or five. That one has grown into three or four. Um, so I will probably this fall do a little digging, pull some out just to keep that in check. But we've got a dahlia planted here against a white um coneflower we've got some more salvias some more coneflowers a budlea or butterfly bush planted here it smells really nice here we have the fountain that we made if you have not watched that video go and check out that video this is a diy water fountain I literally bought every piece and part of this at local stores here to me. Anyone can do this. So if you want just a nice water feature, you can do it. Um, the lamb's ear here is in full bloom, as you can see, and you may see a few bees buzzing around. Um, they're, they're starting to come out this morning. They 
love the blooms on the lamb's ear. So the blooms on the lamb's ear can be a little unkept looking, but the pollinators love it so much, I let it go. But here in the next few weeks, it will be coming out because it's starting to be done. Back here on the rock garden, in addition to a bunch of weeds that I haven't pulled yet, I have this container, which is looking really good. Um, this is the uh, Picasso Super Bells. Um, so it's the purple with the chartreuse lime green edges. And I have that in this pot with a white sun patience and an ivy growing up this trellis form. So this is just a little sweet planter right here. The Sweet Autumn Clematis, as you can see behind me, is already starting to be a garden beast this year. I love this plant for this reason. This is one plant. This is what Sweet Autumn Clematis does. Um, I do have a video about this plant specifically on the channel that you can go look at. Again here, I've left Dusty Miller growing from winter because it just provides so much interest. And it's in this urn with some Creeping Jenny. I've got more, oh, now this is fun. Here's some more purple coneflowers and a um, bee balm, Monarda. <clears throat> and then these back here are my giant lilies that I put in the ground this year. They were in the same unboxing video that the canna lilies were in. Um, and so this is the first year of their growth. Now they will get bigger than this, but for the first year, these lilies have grown about three feet tall and each one is putting out three or four flower heads. There's another one back there and there's another one over there. A couple of them are kind of stretching away from the fence, but that's okay. Um, I, I'm just excited about them because they are putting on such a good show. They just opened up yesterday. Um, and so next year I'm thinking they will even grow bigger than that. These things get uh, the four to five feet tall height with maturity. I've got another dahlia planted here that's fixing to bloom. <clears throat> here I have a foxglove. And so he bloomed really nice and he's already starting to fade a little bit, but there's still some good uh, color in that bloom. Another salvia. I've got my swing trellis arch here um, with the nice baskets and the standard uh, grapevine hyacinths. I grow this grapevine hyacinths on this trellis every year. Um, I've got several videos out there talking about it. Um, it's just a great annual plant to put on something like this to provide lots of interest and color. Here you can see, again, I've got some melon sage back here, a good, huge plant, very mature, puts out these really nice leaves. I really like the way the lily is coming out amongst its foliage. Then I've got another blueberry here, some more salvia day lilies. Um, this put on a fantastic show for, oh gosh, three or four weeks. And so now it's almost time for me to shear this back. Um, so some perennials like this one, they will come up early spring, put on a fantastic show. Um, then you can see they kind of start to flop over and you're left with just a mass of dead heads and seed pods. And so what I can do is I will come in here within the next week or two, once the rest of these flowers kind of finish, then I will shear this plant back to about, I don't know, three or four inches from the ground. What is it? And it will flush back out. Um, if you, I was fixing to say it, now that you've asked, I can't think about it. <laughs> you can come back to it. Yeah, I'll come back to it. Um, but anyway, it'll flush back out and it will rebloom for me at the end of the summer. So, and here's another one right here, just a different variety and you can see the bees buzzing around this set of coneflowers already I've got another little vegetable patch here um, with peppers and eggplant 
And then I've got my nasturtiums and some more caliber koas back there in a big pot. Some more elephant ears. And here, let me just stand back. I love this little view if you can see it. Kind of how I've got this cluster of pots coming in and the elephant ears coming in. And it's just like a little meandering pathway. I love that. So in this pot here, I have these container sunflowers in both of these pots. Now this pot is just the sunflowers. This pot is a mix of sunflowers and a sun gold cherry tomato, which to me, I love the way this looks because I don't have the tomato caged in any way. Um, I have a small uh, topiary form in here that the tomato is planted on to provide some structure just to the base of the tomato plant. But other than that, these vines, these branches of the tomato plant just kind of come out on their own. Um, I don't know, it just looks really natural and fun to me the way the tomatoes just kind of spill out amongst the sunflowers, which are gonna open up here soon. This pot obviously is going for it, looking really good. Mm. All right, take two. Um, the sun was getting a little too bright, um, and so we've waited to this afternoon. So let's pick back up here. Uh, so you can see this pot of sunflowers. Now these are the container sunflowers. You can get seeds that are marked container or dwarf. Um, and that's what these are. I planted these from seeds. So this is as tall as they get, perfect for containers. Uh, behind it here, I have a burning bush that's going crazy. It needs a hard prune. Uh, so that will happen this fall. And now here we come into the shade area of the garden. And if you will look down here with me, this is why I do not like this tree. It's beautiful. So I know a lot of people really enjoy their rows of Sharon, and you can back up and try to get a better view of it. Um, and it is a beautiful shrub. It covers itself in these flowers. But the problem is in my situation, where this tree is planted right directly over a concrete patio, it is a terrible, terrible mess. And the branches get weighted down with the blooms, they flop over. I've already pruned a lot of this up already, uh, but it will continue to grow throughout the summer and it will continue to flop and I'll have to continue to prune. So for now he's staying because it's a good filler, it looks good, but it is a lot of maintenance. So beware of Rose of Sharon. So right over here, you can see I've got, um, I've did caladium patches um, here with the hydrangeas. Um, and these hydrangeas, uh, this is a dwarf limelight here. Um, and it is getting ready to put on its show. So hopefully here in the next week or so, this thing will be covered in blooms. Um, this here is a white lace leaf hydrangea. It's got one bloom opening up now. So it's starting to put on its show as well. So here you can kind of see the back of the shade garden and the fish pond area. All right, let's pause right here. So in my last garden tour, um, I showed the strawberry patch right here under this tree. Um, and I talked about how this is a good solution for this area because I really couldn't get anything to grow under this tree. The strawberries are loving the spot. They are really growing too well, but they just don't get enough sun to really give me a huge crop of good strawberries. So it's not a perfect solution. And it's in just a month's time, it's already to the point where this just looks messy and unkept to me. So the strawberries will be finding a new home and I'll just have to find something else to stay here under the base of this tree. So here you can see our little fish pond. We've got begonias kind of as our focal centerpiece up here and it fades back into the shade garden. Um, and here I've got a pers uh, Persian shield and a shrimp plant on display just to bring some interest into the area. And then right back over here is our okra and corn. We've got some corn planted here and some okra. That's looking really good. All right, and that brings us to this area here. 
So this purple lace leaf hydrangea um, is looking really good. The chair fountain provides a really pretty sound. Um, I've got hostas and coleus planted here. So it's, look, it's turning out to be a really nice spot. This hydrangea, I mean, it's just, I, I love this hydrangea putting on a great show the way it does. Here we have our antique um, butter or milk separator that I've showed before in videos. So literally this is just a antique uh, flea market find of an old cream separator. And I use it to put different plants on. And it just is a good space filler. Nice to see here in the garden. This plant right here is currently one of my favorites. These are beautiful. They're fun to look at, they're fun to touch. So this is a chenille plant. Let me, I've got the tag right here. So there's a handy tip. Keep your tags in your pots and then you can always reference them. So this is a chenille plant. Wonderful texture and interest in the garden. All right, and then, all right, and then finally that brings us right here to the main part of the patio. So here is our trio of metal containers. These are our three stainless steel containers. I have a video planting these up, um, and this is just a literally a mixed bag of plants. I went for a wild, crazy look. So we have eucalyptus, we have the starry night petunia, we have the firecracker plant, we have lemongrass. Um, there's several things in here. Verbenas, there's three different kinds of verbenas in here. So just a really nice, interesting look. And then you can see the flanking of plants on either side here. Um, these are uh, cosmos that I have grown from seed here. Here, with, this is a um, mosquito plant, a citronella plant. Wonderful thing to have on your patios. Keep, helps keep the mosquitoes away. A beautiful white bacopa with a variegated white ivy trailing down there. This is a good uh, hummingbird attracting plant. And it's really this red pop of color in here with the foxtail ferns and the sweet potato vine with the pink variegation. It's looking really good. All right, so over here you can kind of see on the other side of the patio a very similar setup. It's intended to kind of mirror each other but be different. So the main similarity is the anchor pot, which has the foxtail fern and this kufia or firecracker plant, same as the other side. And it has the sweet potato vine in it with the pink variegation. And then I have a fun pot of canna lilies, not canna, Lord of mercy, calla lilies. And then I have some amaryllises here and some gladiolas and a nicotiana plant blooming out of the bottom there. And so that kind of just wraps up the patio. It kind of, I think we'll stop here for today. I think this garden tour is getting kind of long enough. I hope you've enjoyed seeing where my garden is for the month of June. I hope you guys are having as much success in your gardens for June. Um, it's that time of year where everything is changing and growing and different flowers are coming open and others are fading out. It's an exciting time to be in the garden, so I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if for some reason you aren't subscribed to Horticulture Geek, then hit that subscription bottom button down below and follow along on our journey. Until next time, guys, from my garden to yours, I wish you all the best and happy gardening. Thank you.